Greetings and salutations, this is Domingo Martinez. I'm going to go ahead and show you how to get two, or how to control two DC motors using an in integrated chip. So the first thing you want to do is take out said chip. So this uh, L293D is going to control our DC motors for us. So unlike a servo, uh, we can't just control it, you know, by itself. We actually need an integrated chip to help us out, because it uh, takes into consideration the logical sequences. Uh, let's go ahead and take out a mini breadboard, because if you can handle the mini breadboard, you can handle the actual breadboard. Uh, this is the preferable one, or even this one, but we'll go ahead and use mini breadboards. Uh, we're going to take out two DC motors. It really doesn't matter which DC motors you use. I'm just going to go ahead and use these. Personal preference, but you can use this DC motor, this one that has the little fins on it, so you can see it rotating. Actually, that's pretty legit. Let me take those out. Skirt. Let's go ahead and. Uh, take out the brain of our program here, of our project, the Arduino. And that should be it for now, so I'm just going to hit components again. And so I'm going to go ahead and get rid of these. Just hit delete. Get rid of those. I'm going to place the uh, chip directly on the center of your breadboard, so it lies right in the middle. And then if you uh, click on an object and then type R, it rotates it. So I'm going to go ahead and rotate that. I'm going to go ahead and rotate this DC motor. And Alright, so the one thing that you need to realize about this uh, L293D chip is it's pretty symmetrical. So what you see on top is essentially what you'll have on the bottom. So as you're wiring, just kind of keep that in mind. Um, the first thing you want to do is take a look at your grounds. The grounds are the two in the middle, on the top and on the bottom. And it's very important that when you're wiring this in reality, that you keep in mind which one is... Uh, you know, the correct orientation. So make sure that you're looking at the L as you're actually reading it. So make sure it's uh, upward. So I'm going to go ahead and connect my ground together on one side. And your grounds should always be black. And I'm going to do same Z's for the other side. So you don't have to make it curl, you can just do a straight line if you wanted to, but I'm being extra right now. Um, so once you have this situation, the grounds on this side are connected to each other, same these on top, then go ahead and connect the ground on the opposite side to the other one. So I guess I'm just going to try and do it like this so it's a bit more visually pleasing. I'm not sure if that is the case though. Alright, so grounds connected here, grounds connected here, and then both grounds are connected to each other. So we're good on this end uh, as far as grounds go. Let's go ahead and make sure that we connect our motors. So for the motors they're going to be connected right next to the ground. So output 3 and output 4. And I'm going to leave this one green. And I'm going to go ahead and make this one orange. And then I'm going to keep that one green and keep that one orange. Alright, so now we got our motors set up. So step one, grounds. Step two, motors. Step three, 
So your input 4 on this side, input 3 on this side. Uh, these are going to go to your Arduino. So let's go ahead and use pins 6, 5, 4, and 3. Um, and you can test these with any pins, whether they're P, W, M, pulse width modulation pins or not. So it's up to you. I would just go ahead and test them, see how they work. So I'm going to make this uh, yellow. No particular reason why. I'm going to go ahead and make this one, uh, not yellow, but blue. I'll go ahead and keep this one yellow, keep this one blue. Alright, so now that your um, DC motors are connected to the Arduino, the last thing to do is supply some power. Yo, chill. Alright, so we're going to go ahead and this is all the end uh, pins are your powers. So right here where it says enable 2, that is a power. This is a power of VCC. Enable one here is your power. And this one's actually the voltage supply. So let's go ahead and connect all the powers together. So I'm going to go ahead and make that red. And then. Same these over here. Go ahead and make that red, and then let's go ahead and make this red. So now that you have all of this, let's go ahead and it doesn't matter if you connect it from here or here or here, but go ahead and connect it to your 5 volts. So they're all connected, so it doesn't matter which pin you start at. I'm going to go ahead and connect this to my 5 volts. And that reminds me that I forgot something crucial, which was to connect your ground to the ground on the Arduino. Foolish man. So I'm going to go ahead and connect my ground. You can use this ground if you want. I'm just going to go ahead and make my way over here because I'm extra. Let's go ahead and make that black. Alright, so last but not least, so this should be able to power or it should be able to uh, tell it what's going on but unfortunately it may not power the motors because there's not enough power to supply to the motors because this guy only gives out 5 volts. So we're going to need a little bit more than that and let's go ahead and uh, supply it with some external voltage here and that's going to be 9 volts so whenever you're dealing with uh, several components like multiple servos multiple m motors not only do you need a power source for your Arduino but you need one for the uh, actual components themselves so let's go ahead and uh, connect this guy to to our uh, voltage supply and this one's going to go to the ground so 
So we're done skis. Um, let's go ahead and see if we can get one of these motors moving. So we're going to program it to see if we can get some motors moving. So to program, um, you know, your circuit schematic here, what you're going to do is you're going to hit code editor and it should bring up kind of a default code. I'm just going to go ahead and delete all of this. And there's two important things that you should always have in an Arduino program. That's void setup. And the structure and syntax is important. So there's my void setup, and you should have void loop. All right, so whatever goes in um, here inside void setup, inside the curly brackets, only runs once. Whatever goes in void loop runs continuously. So um, we can be a little extra and, and name the motors and name the pins, but I'm just going to go ahead and skip that step. And I'm just going to go ahead and make these pins. I'm just going to call them by the numbers. So my motors are connected to pin 6543. So pin 6. And it's outputting information because it's uh, moving motors, right? So we're not inputting information, we're outputting. So let's go ahead and make these outputs. And I'm a proponent of copy, not cut, homie. Copy and paste. So pin three, four, five, and six. All right, so now let's run one of these motors. Hopefully it runs. So we're going to tell, let's see, let's see. Um, well, it looks like this top motor here is connected to six and five. So, well, let's see what six does. So let's turn it on. And make sure you have a semicolon after every line of code. And then we're going to run this for about, um, we'll say one second. So our Arduino works in milliseconds. So I'm going to make a comment and say 1,000 equal to one second. So this is actually milliseconds. So let's run this guy, see what happens. Nay, you say. Pin mode, A, capital, lowercase o. Same as these, that copy and paste though. All right, so now it's spinning in one direction. So if six and five are the top motor, you never want six high and five high. Because if you do that, then it's it might not, actually, I don't know what's gonna happen. Let's see what happens if we do do that. It might stall, or it should stall. In reality, it would stall. I don't know about this program. I'm gonna hit stop real quick. So you gotta hit stop simulation first. Then I'm gonna go ahead and uh, low key copy and paste. Let's see what happens. Yeah, it's like it's jittering is what it's doing because it doesn't know if it should go counterclockwise or um, clockwise. So it's kind of just stuck, which is not good for the chip, nor is it good for your Arduino. So be sure that if you have um, these two, which is on six and five, make sure that if they're, because they're considered one motor, that you uh, don't have them on.
pi at the same time. Alright, so let's go ahead and uh, move the second motor. Let's say 4 high. And. And like I said, since 3 and 4 are considered to be one motor, right, counterclockwise and, and clockwise, be sure that that both of them are never on high, that only one of them should be. So you always have, for movements, you always have like four of them, two of which should be high, two should not. Gucci. All right, thank you.